guys, welcome to class today. My name is Shannon. So for this class today, we are doing a gentle yoga class. It's a great class for, for beginners. Um, if you're just looking to cool down in the day, uh, if you're suffering from injuries, or you just need to de-stress in general. So for this class, I have water and I have a yoga block. You can have a towel as well if you'd like. We're going to start seated, cross-legged, taking your hands to your knees. As you exhale, tuck your chin to your chest and lean it on back, stretching the back side of the body. As you inhale, lengthen, lift the chin, lift the head, eyes to the ceiling, seated cat cow. Let's do that again. Exhale, tucking under. And inhale, lengthen. Let's do that again, guys. Really uh, articulate the spine here. Observe what might feel crunchy, tender. Let's do a few more rounds, moving to your breath. Two more. And one more time. Good. Now let's begin to circle. So your hula hooping around your spinal column here, keeping those hips grounded all in one direction to begin. If you're feeling a little more limber today, you might even raise your forehead to the ground. One more in this direction. And now the opposite direction. Observing if one side moves a little bit easier than the other. Let's do two more. All right, as you center up, take one hand to your mat, opposite arm overhead. Keep that shoulder connected in its sockets. So you're not lifting it up around your ear. And then walk it out as far as you can go without lifting that opposite hip. Now, if this is a bit tight, you might find that elbow stays lifted. If you're able to get it down, great. It doesn't make the pose better or worse. It's just you might have to go a little further if you're feeling looser and back off if you're feeling tighter. Back to center, other way. Hips grounded. Imagine you're between two panes of glass, really opening through that side body. Go one more time each way. Go a little bit deeper maybe this time as you get warmer. Deep inhales and exhales. Other way. As you come to center here, take the soles of the feet together into Baddha Konasana. You can hold onto your ankles and make a cradle for your toes. Pull your shoulders back, bring your heart forward towards your heels. Keep that length in your spine. Now periodically inhale, find length. Exhale, find depth. Almost like you're floating in and out of those tight muscles. More deep breaths here. Take your time. You find your own depth. Hmm. Okay, as you inhale, we're going to find our way up. Take one leg out to the side. Opposite foot in. Now, you could reach for your toes here. Open through the side body. Opposite arm up over the ear. If your foot is just a little far away from you, you could use a strap around that foot. If your neck is bothering you, maybe you take that opposite palm to the small of your back today instead. Breathe into those tight spaces and then maybe shake your head yes and no a few times just to make sure you're not tensing up the neck. So with our gentle practice today, we're not rushing through anything. You're observing, you're taking your time. Sitting 
tone, reach into those toes. Maybe start by reaching that arm out over your ear and then maybe transitioning the palm behind the back if that feels like a better place to be today. Happy neck, pull that shoulder open. So when you find a spot that's a little tight, take deep breaths into it. Inhale into that space. Exhale, think about dissolving one layer of muscular tension, maybe one fiber even. Every little bit counts. Keep that hip grounded, both hips grounded, reaching down through the mat. Let's take two more deep inhales and exhales here. into a happy space in those hip sockets. Shoulders down. A little bit of rounding is okay here. You might feel a stretch in your hips, your lower back, your shoulders, a lot happening here. And just like with our cobbler's pose, we inhale, find a little bit of length, we exhale, find a bit of depth. Making sure you're not clenching the teeth or holding your breath at any time. slowly finding your way up, releasing those arms. Let's take a cross-legged position once again. This time working with our eagle arms. I'm going to take my left arm under my right and then lift them up as high as I can. Now if your arms don't wrap perfectly, just do the best you can and maybe give it a little shoulder shrug. You're not clenching your teeth, that's really important here. Maybe you take one ear to one side and then the other. Maybe you look left and right. Observe where that tightness might be in those shoulders. Give me two more deep breaths into your shoulders. And then as you release, roll it out a bit. Switching arms. two sides are exactly the same, so this might side might feel a bit different. Once again, drop the ear, shoulder to shoulder. Maybe looking left and right. Maybe shrugging those shoulders a little bit. Hopefully that all feels good. One more deep breath here. And then releasing one more time, shoulder shoulders back. Okay, so I'm gonna face away so you can see what my right and left are doing, okay? Don't mind my back here. Right palm to the small of your back, look to your left knee, left hand behind your head, pull it down towards your chest. switching sides. Let's take this into an all fours. 
shoulders, knees under your hips. As you exhale, tuck your tailbone, chin to chest, round your back. As you inhale, lengthen the traditional cat cow here. Exhale, tuck in under. Inhale, lengthen. Let's do that twice more. Exhale, tuck. And one more time. Bring your knees together. Walk palm over palm to your left. As far as you can go, take your right hand on top of your left. Sit over your right hip. So we're stretching the whole right side of your body. Side go. Let's take two or three more deep breaths here. As you inhale, let's find our way up. We're going to take this to all fours again. Walk over to your right. Take your left hand on top of your right. Now sit over your left hip. Reach the hands out before you sit over the hip. It gives you more traction. Widen out my knees, draw my tailbone back, and lower head to the mat. Crawl your fingertips as far away from your hips as you can. to those elbows, lining up your middle fingers, your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders, pulling the mat backwards, and your heart forwards. Once again, shaking your head yes to no a few times, maybe looking left to right, maybe doing a semi-circles, left to right, and not touching your teeth. Drag back through your shoulders so you might feel your triceps, your lats. All good stuff. Usually one side is a little tighter than the other. Alright, so from here, you can take a sphinx pose once again or if you want to bring it up and not shook over, you're welcome to do so. Just make sure you're taking care of your back. It should feel good. If it's painful, you need to make adjustments. Once again, looking left to right, maybe dropping your chin to your chest. Little semi-circles, maybe looking up and down. Then from here, downward puppy, tailbone up. Armpits down, forehead to your mouth. Now from here, let's transition into all fours once more. Clap your toes and we'll take a downward dog. After I adjust my shorts here. Okay, so from your downward dog, your feet are hip distance apart. And let's 
let's pedal. Doing one heel and then the other. It's okay if the heels don't touch the ground. Just do the best you can. And if one side is tighter than the other, maybe hold that one down for a breath or two longer. Once again, shaking that head, yes, no. Oh. Walking your hands back to your feet. Pause here, hold opposite elbows. Take your ears on the inside with your biceps and gently shake your head, yes and no. to center, let's switch sides. Ooh, got some wall in the way here. See how far open you can go. I'm gonna adjust myself a bit. Ah, there we go. See how that feels. Mm. to the side. If you're mirroring me, it will be your right. It's my left. My heel is on track with my knee. My arms come up and then I'm going to reach one hand as the opposite one comes overhead. Again, like you're between two panes of glass, not heavily weighing up that bottom arm. Looking up or down is up to you. So you should be feeling maybe a nice stretch through that side body. That feels really good. Two more deep inhales and exhales. Stay down there. Stay down there. You keep on being done by Okay. Other side. So let's see how this side might feel a little bit different. Not heavily weighing up that bottom arm if you can avoid it. Notice how two, two sides are exactly the same. Let's take two more deep inhales and exhales here, making some micro adjustments as you go. And now as you come back to center, we're going to take this into a frog squat. So this can be a little challenging, which is where you might want to bring our, our block into play for this one. If you find that this is really challenging to come into a frog squat, you can put that block underneath at some height. It could be the long height, you can flip it um, for different angles, like so. Or if you want to increase that challenge for today. Elbows on the inside. Imagine someone's pulling your spine long as you're nudging those knees open. A really nice one for the hips. If you have any knee problems, I'd recommend the block. Again, maybe looking left to right. Just kind of a reminder not to wear those shoulders like earrings. Okay, as you release, I'm gonna actually take this up to standing and lighten up my feet for a fan pose. So your toes are gonna be four to five feet apart, depending on your height. Hands to your hips, hinge it on forward. Release those hands down. This is also where if your inner thighs are very tight, you could use a block to help bridge the distance. 
Otherwise, palms under your shoulders, elbows pull back, crown of the head reaches towards your mat. And shake your head yes and no once again. to one leg in one direction. Keep your hips level. Pull yourself as close to that leg as you can. And walking over the opposite direction. Pull on in. slowly. Let's bring it back for a child's pose just before we switch sides, yeah? Sit it on back. Now let's switch sides. Left leg forward. Oh, nice hip flexor stretch. Maybe move those hands to the inside. Let that left knee trail out a little bit for <clears throat> modified lizard <clears throat> or dragon. Keep the head up, heart lifted, and the breath deep. with the pinky fingers together, elbows together, drag it on back. Okay guys, slowly release. Let's get a quick sip of water before we move on. I'm going to take this into a straddle stretch, also known as a turtle pose.
to lift up, shoulders back, lengthen. Your thighs are stretching. one side more than the other. I usually feel my dominant leg more. I've said this before in other classes of mine. Um, unless you have an injury, usually that dominant leg will be tighter because it gets used more. It's just kind of how it is. Let's take two more deep breaths here. And then when you're ready, let's come on up. We'll do one more seated stretch before we take this onto your back. I'm going to take my right leg on the bottom, my left leg on top for fire log pose. Now, if your legs don't stack perfectly, let's say you're here, that's okay. Um, I just wanna get a little more length in your spine. Don't force that knee down. If you're feeling enough of a stretch here, you stay here. Otherwise, you take a little walk. You might have been teaching for 22 years this month, I believe. Whenever I say that, I always tell people I started when I was four, right? Um, but no, this is what I call my big girl job. It's all I've ever done is worked in fitness. that top hip, let those muscles release. We'll take three more deep inhales, right into that hip socket, exhales, letting it all dissolve. Twice more. And you come on up. Mm, let's switch legs. one side's a bit tighter than the other, and that's pretty normal. Do the best you can. If you want to walk forward, you do. Ooh. Now, if you're like me, some days something might, might not be so tight, and then all of a sudden you do something unusual, like lifting furniture or heavy groceries or something um, that your body's used to. You take a new class, and the next you go, wow, I have muscles I didn't know existed. Go figure. Take three more deep breaths here into that hip socket. Dissolving tension twice more, deep breathing. And last one. As you come on up here, let's take this onto our back with our block. We're going to do a fun one, assist bridge. Bend your knees. Now, you could do a traditional bridge if you'd prefer, or you could put your block at some particular height underneath your tailbone. And now we're getting the benefits of the bridge with a little less effort. really nice about this assisted bridge is that you get all the benefits of the bridge pose without so much of the effort. You can hold it longer. It's more passive, more relaxing. Now, let's take two more deep breaths here. elbow and then both legs straight up to the ceiling. Now right away it shouldn't feel like there's a lot of effort here. This is legs up the wall. It should be helping with things like uh, varicose veins, cellulite, um, circulation, swelling of the legs. This can be used as a pose for meditation as well or you could truly put your legs up a wall. Here. Oh, it was really nice. You can hold this longer if you want to, guys. It's up to you. I'm going to take two more deep breaths for myself. And then last one. From here, my legs up for a moment. And slowly lower those legs down. And then I'm going to give my back a little massage, side to side, yeah? 
and then from here, I'll roll up to seated. Let's find a cross-legged position. I'll put my block off to the side here. All right, guys, while you're here, let's take a deep breath. Interlace the fingers overhead, open through the back body, eye gaze to the ceiling, drop the shoulders down. deep breath and release. Great job guys. I hope you're feeling relaxed, uh, regenerated, and things feel really good in your body right now and I hope to see you again in the near future. All right, take care.